Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Barry Fitzgerald in Edward McSorley's Our Own Kind on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a story ideally suited to the day, St. Patrick's Day. It is called Our Own Kind by Edward McSorley. And Mr. McSorley is evidently the man with experience to write it, for he has been at various times a farmer, a sailor, and a fisherman. And not only do we have this warm-hearted and appropriate story, but we are especially lucky to have in the starring part that superb Irish actor Barry Fitzgerald, a man whose genius I have admired ever since the days many years ago when I used to line up outside the Abbey Theatre in Dublin to see his wonderful performances in that famous, almost fabulous theatre. So here we are on St. Patrick's Night, all ready to enjoy ourselves with Barry Fitzgerald in Edward McSorley's Our Own Kind. And now, Frank Goss, have you a word or two about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Edward McSorley's Our Own Kind, and starring Barry Fitzgerald. St. Patrick's Day. A great day for the Irish. But especially so for me, for wasn't it on St. Patrick's Day that I got my first glimpse of America? Ah, that was a long time ago. I was a young one then, and so was we might, Nell. But we found happiness here. In Providence, Rhode Island, we lived, and we raised two fine sons. But we found sadness, too when the oldest, God rest him, was lost. There, there, now. It's all over now. But don't hold in. Go into your room. Have a good cry. It'll do you good. Dad's right, Mom. And try to get some rest. Do, oh, Chris. Chris, you're all we have left. Poor Will. Will is in good hands now, Mom. Remember what Father O'Connor told you. Here now, try to sleep. I'll try. I'll try. You ought to get some rest yourself, Dad. Ah, uh, there'll be time enough for resting later. We've somebody else to be thinking about now. Little Willie. Well, he can stay at Aunt Tessie's for a while. He'll be all right there until we can make some arrangements. Arrangements? Arrangements for what? To have him taken into the boys' home. He'd get good care there, anyway. He'd be better off in an institution. Do you really think so? Chris, would you think so if he were your own? Without being sentimental about it, yes. All right, then, let's be sentimental about it. Now, there's something a lad needs. Somebody to run to when the world gets too big for him. Not only somebody to treat his bruises, but somebody to pat his head when they're doing it. A boy needs comfort, and you can't crawl into the lap of an institution. I'm bringing him home here where he belongs. Because, you see, Chris, he's... Our own kind. What's the matter with you, Ned? You've ruined them all, man. You're acting like it was your first day in the foundry. I'm sorry, Tim. I've got something on my mind. Little Willie again. How old is the boy now? He'll be seven years old 
come October. Uh, I'll be glad when he's old enough to come to work and then maybe you can forget about him. Well, he'll not be working here, so you needn't wait. He'll have reading and writing. And he'll not be a sod like his grandfather. Aye, and worse yet, like you. Oh, it's the sod I am, is it? At least I can read and write me your name, which is more than you can do. Oh, I'll tell them about that in the office. Maybe they'll make you president of the company. McDermott, Lee, what's going on down here? Well, we were, we were just reminiscing about old times. Well, talk on your own time. Yes, sir, yes, sir. A man can't even talk to his old friend. I don't mind for myself, Ned, but I don't like him yelling at you like that. If he wasn't a foreman, I'd go up and give him a test of his shovel. Ah, never mind. A man's home is his own. Come over and have supper with us, Sunday. That was a fine meal, Nell. Well, I'm going out. Goodbye, Tim, everybody. Uh, good night, Chris. Are you seen that young school teacher again? That's uh... Catherine Daly. Yeah, good. Willie's in our class at school now. Might as well have the family on the right side. <laughs> so long. Well, I'd best be getting the dishes done. Take Tim into the parlor. Time for you to go to bed, Willie boy. But how about the funnies, Grandpa? You haven't read me the funnies. Ah, uh, well, the. Uh... Let it go for another day. Tim and I want to talk. Oh, don't let me be a bother. You promised, Grandpa. Well, no. seeing that Tim is a guest, maybe he'll read you the funnies. Oh, not at all. I'd like to have you read them. All right, Willie. Sit on me lap. Yes, well, now we'll, we'll start with this one. I'm all ears. Yes, that's typical of a donkey. <laughs> read, Grandpa. Well, now, this... Here, fella, this is, he's a tinker by the name of, uh, of O'Rourke. What's a tinker? He's a man who fixes pots and pans as good as new. Now, this one over here, oh, he's the bad fella. He's an Englishman. <laughs> it, it goes without saying. And who's the lady, Grandpa? Oh, who's she? Oh, let me see now. Oh, she bought the pots and pans from the Englishman. Yes, robbed her too, he did. <laughs> they were no good until O'Rourke fixed them. But now they're all right? Yes, but the Englishman wants to take them back now because the poor woman can't pay the sorrels. I wonder if the paper knows they've got that comic strip in there. Shut up, you, Tim. Go on, Grandpa, go oh, on. Well, then, O'Rourke and the Englishman get in a fight, as you can see, with O'Rourke naturally getting the best of it. You know, that's enough for tonight. All right, Grandpa. Good night, Uncle Tim. Good night, Willie. I never heard such a comic strip before in all my life. And you want him to know that I can't read or write? I don't want him to follow me, Tim. I don't want him to follow his father, or Chris, who learned a little and then stopped. He's got to see things, too, now he's started a school. I'd like to take him on a little trip. Take a trip? You want to take a trip? Get all dressed up and put on tight shoes? For what? Well, I don't want the boy to think that the whole of America has been squeezed into one little city called Providence, Rhode Island. Now, will we? Well, we can go someplace of a Sunday, can't we? Well, uh, there's the boats to Block Island and other places that live from the wharf. Block Island? Uh, that doesn't sound bad at all. Well, there's two boats that makes the trips. The Warwick and the Mount Hope. The Warwick's a bit slower, but it's, uh, it's a half a dollar cheaper. Well, then we'll take the Warwick. Hmm. However, the captain of the Mount Hope is named O'Flaherty. O'Flaherty? Well, no, I think it's worth the extra half dollar to ensure a man's life getting there safely. We'll take the Mount Hope. Get a load of this fella coming along the deck with the hat. I haven't seen him do a lick of work since we left the dock. The pers per the purser they call him. Look, Grandpa, over there. Yeah. Another boat. Yeah, look, pretty sight, isn't she? M O U. Grandpa, it's the Mount Hope. No, this is the Mount Hope, Willie. We're on the Mount Hope ourselves. Now try to read it again. Now we'll see. Do you make it out any better this time? I can spell it out for you if you want me to. Go ahead, lad. Spell it out. M O U N T H O P E. 
That says Mount Hope. <laughs> now, try, try again, try again. Practice makes perfect, as you must say. Oh, good heavens, did I believe the boy is right. It is the Mount Hope. Now, what kind of a dosage trick is this? Hey, you, you with the hat there. Is there anything wrong? Well, I'm none of your tricks. Now, what ship is this we're on? When we left the wharf, she was the Edgemont. She probably still is. Well, where's the Mount Hope, then? What's become of the Mount Hope? That's her alongside of us there. That's her, all right, Ned. Well, then where's Captain O'Flaherty? Who's he? He's the master of this vessel. That's who he is. There's no Captain O'Flaherty aboard this ship. The master's name is Reginald Crippingham, and we're bound for New London. Tim, Tim, we've been shanghai <laughs> They're taking us to England. <laughs> oh, take it easy, Ned. New London's in Connecticut. Just the same, we've been trapped. Now, look here, you. I bought tickets for the Mount Hope this morning to go to Block Island. Here are me tickets. You can read what they say, can't you? Steamer Edgemont to New London, Connecticut. We don't go near Block Island. You bought your tickets at the wrong window. Don't you New London me. Your game is up. We're going to Block Island, and that'll be all of that. Not on this ship. And don't make any disturbance unless you want to see the inside of the New London jail. Oh, 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 oh that's no use, Ned. He's right. Huh? Jail is... If I was 30 years younger, I'd show that buckle. Now there, Willie, New London's nice enough. Just as good as Block Island. And there's ice cream to be had there. There's none at all on Block Island, you know. Ice cream, lad. Fancy that. Now, what makes you look so sad? You, you couldn't read it. You couldn't read the sign on the boat. Oh, well, now, well, you, I, I've made a mistake, that's all. You couldn't read it. I... I wasn't wearing... Me specs. Grandpa! Grandpa, you couldn't read it! In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of Our Own Kind, starring Barry Fitzgerald. On this friendliest of days, when old friendships are renewed, kept green and fresh as the fields of Kilkenny, I don't think it would be amiss to remind you that the charm of this day lies in the get-togetherness of it. Not only the Irish, but all America seems to become one happy family. But as Thoreau wrote back in 1843... Nothing makes the earth seem so spacious as to have friends at a distance. Now, no one better understands that truth than those who make Hallmark cards. And because they understand your loneliness when you and your dear ones are separated, they offer you a way of bridging the miles, of keeping in touch with friendship cards. And you'll find Hallmark friendship cards always have a way of saying just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. It's a talent that those who make Hallmark cards have like their talent for making cards that are top drawer in design, in materials, in the careful way they're put together. So when you choose your Hallmark cards, do as your friends will surely do. Look on the back for the Hallmark that tells them you cared enough to send the very best. And now we present Act Two of Edward McSorley's Our Own Kind, starring Barry Fitzgerald. No, I couldn't read. And Willie discovered it that day on the boat to New London. He never spoke of it again. But he didn't bring me the funnies of a Sunday either. Nor did we stand together before the picture of brave Robert Emmett that hung in the parlor while I read the words beneath it to him. The words that I had memorized. I had to do something about it, so I went to see Chris's girl Catherine Daly, the school teacher. Couldn't I get you something, Mr. McDermott? Perhaps a cup of tea? No, 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 thank you, no, no. I have a matter of grave importance on my mind. About Willie? Yes, about Willie. I don't know what's gotten into the boy. He was my best student. I was certain he'd win the class medal, but lately... Yes, I know, it's all my fault. My fault for not being able to help him. Miss Daly, will you help him? Well, of course I will. What would you suggest? Well, maybe it'd be the help from the boy if he could teach me to read and write. 
You, Mr. McDermott? Yes, me. I'm asking you, please, girl, to teach an old man the ABC. <laughs> Brown C O W. The brown cow. Just a minute. Your cousin Larry is here. And what are you locking yourself up in this room for every blessed night? Supper's on the table. Hello, Ned. Well, I never expected to see you, Larry. I thought the whole police force would be resting up for the St. Patrick's Day parade tomorrow. Well, I had some business over in this neighborhood, checking up on a few young boys who have been getting into some devilment. Oh, indeed. What sort of devilment? Come on, will you? Take a seat at the table. I'm not too hungry. Bunch of our lads here have been ganging up on kids from other parts of town. Hmm, sounds bad. Yes, and it's getting worse. A couple of days ago, they picked on an old man, called him names and threw mud at him. Go on, Larry. Well, one of the kids is the McNally boy, Stevie. His parents will take care of him all right. But he won't tell who the others were. Grandpa, I don't feel too good. I don't want to eat. Can I go to bed, sir? Yes, well, you can go to bed. I'll be in later to say good night to you. Willie, are you awake, lad? Yes, Grandpa. I'm awake. What's wrong now? I was with Stevie McNally. I was one of the boys Uncle Larry told you about. Yes, I know you were. What made you do it? Stevie said foreigners had no right being over here. And because Stevie said that, you threw mud at an old man. They're not our own kind. You've always said we should stick to our own kind. No, that isn't the way I said it, Willie. Our own kind is the family, and the family sticks together. But outside of that, our own kind means all the people who are here in this country with us, working and building as we are. No matter where they come from or what they were before, they're our own kind now. You never told me that before. Well, I didn't think you needed it before. I'm an old man myself, Willie. But I could walk through any part of this town tomorrow, and none of the others would lift a hand to harm me. I won't do it again, Grandpa. Honest. I believe you, lad. Now, how about sitting out of bed for a minute? Okay. Yeah, there's some beef left over your grandmother put in the icebox, and a boy who ate no supper should be a good match for a sandwich. Sit here in the parlor by the coal stove. I'll get the sandwich. And then Robert Emmett's picture can watch you while you eat. Been a long time since we read the words under the picture, hasn't it? Ah, look at him. Brave Emmett that the judges condemned for trying to set Ireland free. Will I read his words to you? If you want to. Well, it says here, when my country takes a place among the nations of the earth, then, and not till then, let my epitaph be written. Ah, fine words, aren't they? Yes, Grandpa. Shall we read them together, like we used to? You don't know how to read them. You memorized them. Grandma told me. Oh, she did, did she? Well, now, let's see if she's right. Now, the first word is when. That's W-H-E-N. When. I believe, isn't it? Huh? And then we'll skip on to the my, uh, and take, uh, take country. C-O-U-N-T-R-Y. Grandpa, you can read, you can. Yeah, and what made you think I couldn't? But the day on the boat... Oh, I didn't have me specs, as I told you. Do you want to read it with me now? Oh, yes, yes. All right, just once through, though, because we have to be up early in the morning and get seats on the grandstand to watch the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Now, here we go. When, when my, my country... country takes a place, place among, among the, the nations, nations of, of the, the earth. earth. There he is, Grandpa! There's Uncle Tim! Hey, Tim! Up here, Tim! We've a C 
seat for you. Look, Grandpa, there they come. There comes the parade. I'm coming if I can ever get through here. I'll let the man through there, let the man oh, through. Sometimes I wish I wasn't Irish at all. Oh, for heaven's sake, will you look at Pete Carden on the white horse in front of the parade, Tim. <laughs> to look at the airs of him, you'd never think he slept on the floor of me kitchen the first few years after he came over here, would you? He's getting so fat, I can hardly see the horse. Well, I'm only assuming there's a horse, because I, I know Pete isn't that tall. The weight of the money in his pockets kept him from growing full size. Oh, look, look, <laughs> look, there's Teddy Donovan with the bagpipes. Did you ever see such a sight in your life? I did not. With all the blowing he does about other things, you wouldn't think he'd have breath enough left in him for the pipes. Look, look at the part with the four-leaf clovers and the midges. Oh, no, those aren't four-leaf clovers, the shamrocks. And that isn't a midget, it's a leprechaun. Well, that was quite a parade, wasn't it? Come on back to the house, Tim. Sure. Come along, will you? But I was going to church, Grandpa. They're having a play. Catherine Daly, my teacher, is in it. A play? On a holy day? Does Father O'Connor know about it? Sure, he directed it. Oh, well, well, I suppose if he directed it, it must be all right, huh? They're going to do it twice. For the kids this afternoon, and you and Grandma can see it tonight. Ah, no, I'm not much of a one for plays. Run along and come home as soon as it's over. Grandpa! Grandpa! Here, here, boy, you'll knock the walls down. I saw the plate. Catherine! Miss Daly, she was beautiful. Yeah, yes, she's a pretty thing, all right. Now, what is the show about? Dancers doing jigs or reels, I suppose, eh? Oh, no, no. It was a play about a British landlord. A British landlord? In church! On St. Patrick's Day! <laughs> the landlord was trying to drive the Irish tenants out of their houses because they wouldn't tell where their leader was hiding. He wanted to give the girl, that was Miss Daly, money if she would tell. You see? You see? Sure, you see, sure, Jim? Sure, That's sure, the way sure, they work sure. it. That's the way... Sure. They, they, they want, want to meet the girl turning informer, but she didn't do it. Bet she didn't, did she, Willie? Oh, I knew it. Good girl. The leader, Roy, was her beau. She was hiding him. But the landlord went and got the British. And Roy escaped just before they came. You mean he ran away from them? Oh, what you want him to do? Stay and fight the whole British army? Well, what happened then, Willie? The British shot the poor man in the back, didn't they? No, but he got caught later when a spy named Murphy snitched on him. Murphy? Ah, oh, that's the disgrace of the Irish. There's forever a traitor amongst them. Then the landlord offers to get Roy out of jail if Catherine will marry him. Ah, so that's his game. Well, he might as well get that right out of his mind. She never do it. Never in God's world. She didn't, did she? No. Roy escapes and he gets all the rebels. And they drive the British out of Ireland. And Roy and Catherine get married. Mother, mother, get your coat. Come on, come on, Jim. Sure. Come on where? To see the play. It's the greatest play you ever heard of. <laughs> Play was a delight, Catherine. That's what it was. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, it was grand, Miss Daly, just grand. Well, frankly, I'm a little worn out. I better go, Chris. I'll get you cold. I hope you'll come again often since I've got a hunch you'll be a member of the family soon. Oh, you're making the girl blush, Ned. Well, it's becoming to her, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think I have some good news for you about Willie. He came to me after the show this afternoon and begged for a chance to get back into the class contest for the reading medal. And uh, did you refuse him? No. I told him he'd have to make up some ground first. Did he say he would? Yes. He said you'd help him. Oh, I will, I will. Are you ready, Kevin? Yes. Good night, everybody. Well, good, night. good night. Good night. Little Willie. He'll be all right now, Tim. He'll do the Irish proud someday when he hangs out his sing shingle as a doctor or a lawyer. Willie McDermott, M.D. <laughs> I can see it in my mind. Ned, education costs money, lots of it. Willie doesn't need that kind of help, Tim. He needs the kind I've been able to give him. He needs the dreams and the ambition. There's a way open here in America, things called scholarships. He's for the working for them. You know, Tim, this is the biggest country in the world because it's Ireland as well as America. The kind of Ireland that Robert Emmett dreamed about. And it's every other country that has men like him who dream about liberty and a chance for a man to make good on his own. 
That's all that Willie needs. And that's what he's got. And nothing will ever stop him now. Nothing will ever stop him. In a moment, James Hilton and Barry Fitzgerald will return. But first, is there anyone who doesn't love a bit of Blarney? Even if you aren't an O'Brien or a Quinn, chances are someone sent you a green-tinted card today. And didn't it please and flatter you to know that someone was thinking about you? Why not spread this same fond, sincere kind of thoughtfulness among those you care for? Send Hallmark friendship cards the year round. If you feel you haven't the gift for expressing what's in your mind... Let the makers of Hallmark cards take care of that. Picture the pleased grins that would greet your Hallmark cards that simply say, Hello, across the miles. To those old school pals you only see at class reunions, that favorite aunt you used to visit during vacations, remember? And gruff old Uncle Ben, how many years is it since he used to take you fishing? He was no softy, he would tell you. But it's strange how his glasses sort of cloud up about some things. Like having your card to let him know you haven't forgotten him. Yes, there's a host of dear ones who'd welcome a little affectionate greeting from you. The kind you'll find on the legions of Hallmark friendship cards. See them where you buy your Hallmark cards. Send them. You'll be glad you did. Here again is James Hilton. Wasn't our play tonight a grand way to close a grand day? A delightful story of one of the most admirable of all human traits, that of wanting your children to have something better than you had. And we also enjoyed the company of one of the most delightful personalities in the whole acting profession. A great actor, as you have heard, and a great Irishman. Thank you for being here, Barry Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. And I'd like to thank Gilbert Barnett, who played my grandson, and Dick Ryan, who played Tim. I've really enjoyed myself. In fact, I like it here. Well, we're certainly glad you do. Well, I might change some of the decorating around here. <laughs> I think I could stand a touch more green, you know, around the place. <laughs> and maybe I'd add a, a couple of more halves to that orchestra. <laughs> of course, I'd be sure not to change those hallmark greeting cards of yours. The mighty fine cards, just the way they are. And so is your playhouse. I've enjoyed being here tonight, and I thank you for allowing me to celebrate this happy day with you. Fine to have you with us, Mr. Fitzgerald. Come back and see us soon again. And please listen next week when we bring you a great story of the early American West, Stuart Lake's Frontier Marshal, starring Richard Conte in the role of Wyatt Earp. And the following week, it will be our great pleasure to welcome the current Academy Award-winning star, Loretta Young, in a dramatization of Irving Stone's book, Immortal Wife. And the week after that, Betty Smith's novel, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, starring Margaret O'Brien. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday... Our director-producer is D. Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our play tonight was adapted by Joel Murcott. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs>